what's going on, Minnesota Viking fans. Welcome to the Purple People Podcast. It is Monday, March 25th, and we are ready to talk about some trade-ups. We kind of we mentioned this last week, but I'm really excited about this show because I'm going to say this is going to happen until it doesn't, and I'm very upset, which is exactly on brand for what the Vikings will do to me. Well, <laughs> episode 555, trade for May? Question mark. I am Ron Burgundy. Um, I did a poll yesterday on Twitter, I think my first one ever, and uh, overwhelmingly, like two-thirds of the vote. In this scenario, I said, would you rather, and you have three options, trade up to number three for Drake May, the quarterback from North Carolina, uh, trade up to number four for Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy, or stay put at 11 and 23. And to my surprise, Drake May was the overwhelming First choice. The second choice, shockingly enough, was stay put at eleven to twenty-three. Not a lot of love for JJ McCarthy. I don't know if it's at. I so I like I like JJ McCarthy. I don't like him at number four. I feel like that's an opinion a lot of other people share. Four seems maybe too high, but he's gonna go early in this draft. I feel like. Well, what do you think about Washington saying that they're taking a good close look at him for number two? I beg. Please take it. And here's here's my theory on that. And we're just going to jump right in because we I'm sure we'll bounce around like we always do on this show. I I put on Twitter one of the guys I don't remember the name. I'm sorry I didn't give you the shout. Out, but what, what's says, Twitter? Is that a thing? Yeah, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Never going to call it anything else. <laughs> it's they, Twitter. Uh, Twitter. <laughs> they uh, the guy said, "Hey, number three is not possible." I said, three is absolutely possible. Here's an article that says it's possible from Gerard Mayo himself, the new coach of the New England Patriots. New England sits at three. We've talked about this at nauseum on the show. There's only a month left, so we'll talk about it a little more. Number one, Caleb Williams to the Bears. Number two, that's pretty much when the jack begins. Are the commanders going to take Jaden Daniels? The yeah, it's interesting that like, recently number two, three, and four have also they're open to trades. So it's interesting. I think that's a smart, available. you know, very, very not sexy answer. Hey, we'll listen to to offers. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, and they'll say out loud, "Hey, you're going to have to impress us," which makes sense. You're going to have to overpay in this point in time, and just at this part of the NFL in 2024, people are going to give up probably a little more than they should based on that points board and draft value. However, you calculate it, we calculate it, probably all a little different, but there's. A basic neighborhood. It's got to be tempting, though. When you look at two first rounders this year and a first rounder next year, you know, it's got to be tempting. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think the good thing for the Vikings is that trade with the Texans. Having two firsts this year alone, you don't have to wait on it. Because let's say, and I'm just going to throw a hypothetical out here. Let's say the who's a team that needs what? Carolina calls us and they say, hey, we are terrible at wide receiver. We want Justin Jefferson. We will give you our next three first round picks, but we don't have one this year. Now you say, oh, man, three firsts, so you pretty much get to double up for three years. That's great. But you don't get anything now. Now reverse that. You get two this this year and possibly one next year. I think that's a lot more appealing. I, I love the trade with the Texans. Even if they were, and I don't think they're going to do this, if they stay put, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a wild take here. And you guys tell us in the comments. If the Vikings end up staying put, I think there's a solid possibility. Now, I don't know percentage-wise if it's above 50%, but I'd say it's close to the 30 to 40% range. J.J. McCarthy's still there around 10 or 11? Absolutely and, not. And then we could go and get a corner at 23. That would make me I mean, happy. I, I agree with Adam. I don't think that's going to happen, but if it yeah. looks like he may slide in the draft, uh, if you haven't already traded up and he's sitting there at number eight. He's going to get call? overdrafted so bad this year. Yeah. I think so, too. I think that's the most likely scenario. But I think about our competition in this draft. So, obviously, the trade partners would either be Washington, uh, New England, or Arizona, possibly the Chargers. So, there's two, three, four, and five. But I could also see Denver or uh, the Giants trying to move up, too. Well, here's the thing. I Denver, sure. Denver, I totally agree with. Maybe the Raiders, too, because they're right behind us in the draft. What do you and I, I get it. I, you guys have heard me openly hate Daniel Jones on the show. He is overrated and overpaid. And he's not worth it. He's, he never has been. He never was. 
but the the Giants are still on the hook to pay him, and he's still going to be on the roster this year. Are we really that at that point in the NFL where it's just like everyone's just going to start eating money like they did for Russell Wilson? Because at least with Russell Wilson, you Dude. can say the former Super Bowl winner. He and let me let me go back to the Russell. Wilson. Well, why couldn't you draft a quarterback and let uh, you know Daniel Jones play this year out with a quarterback on your roster, a young quarterback to take over? Because for they him. don't have any weapons. They have no. They lost Saquon Barkley, which was their best offensive player, and they don't have a wide receiver of merit on that team. Like even even if they got someone as like a Hollywood Brown or a DJ Chark, a name you've at least heard out in the ether. They got somewhere. Darren Wallaby. I mean, that was cool two years ago <laughs> when he was good. I guess I don't know, man. And that's what I'm looking at, like with New England and the Giants. I would probably I would say our biggest competition here to get to either one of those picks uh, at two or three. Because the Giants, if they want to trade up, you don't have to give up as much as the Vikings do. But my God, both of those rosters are god awful. And I'm not saying that defensively. I think that based on their identity is going to be great. I would love but, to see the Giants trade up and take a, a one of the top receivers this year. I could also yeah. see uh, Denver being in the market for a star pass catcher because there are some pass catchers in this draft right here that could be franchise altering. Absolutely. And I'm only throwing this this quarterback stuff out because it's, it's we've never seen this as Vikings fans. We you know I watched the Wobcast today. There's a name you haven't heard of in a while. Go I watched that to listen. Yeah, That's it came up as a, yeah, he's doing it independently now, but oh. um, he's got a guy, another uh, co-host on the show, and they're talking about first thing in that show was hey, this hasn't happened before inside the top ten, and you know this is an exciting time to be a Vikings fan. Assuming that it goes well and we nail it, this will be a great year to reflect on. But I'm just reading the tea leaves as a fan, and I'm, I'd be ignorant if I didn't show you this North Carolina tattoo. Here. Of course, I love Drake. I do have to ask you, though, Smith, how much of a surprise would it be for you if the Chargers decided to move up and grab J.J. McCarthy? I don't know how and why they would do that when they just Well, they got the coaching over. staff for it now. Sure, but. You have to eat even more dead money than Denver would for Russell Wilson if you're – and that's the thing. Are you just going to sit him there? I mean, that you, that basically that tells Justin Herbert we don't want you anymore, which I don't believe that at all. So you would cause a ruckus there in the quarterback room. Harbaugh's going to do what Harbaugh wants to do. I just don't see a whole lot around that. I think I, Harbaugh goes to that GM and says, I want McCarthy. I think that GM's going to fold because uh, – Denver does not have a great track history of making very good decisions. I will tell you this, Adam. In any other year, I would agree with you, but with how much money he's on the hook for and with – You don't think they could trade him and shed that contract? They can't get – they have to eat at least a year of it, which is a ton. There's a shit ton of money up against them for that. Now, you're, to your point, if you take a rookie, sure. I just don't think that – I don't think that's the way they go. I think – and here's the thing. This is what we're all doing. And I say this on you, I, and Kyle's level. We're, we're just TV NFL watchers. We're not scouts. We're not GMs, all that fun stuff. But it's about the projection. At least with Justin Herbert, we can see, like, okay, he won an offensive rookie or won rookie of the year, whatever. He's thrown a ton of touchdowns. Like, okay, we can kind of see where he's at, where he's going. With J.J. McCarthy, that's the biggest thing going against him in this draft, which I like most every trait about it. But – it's just there's not a lot uh, as much footage, I would say. He played a lot of games, but there's there's not a lot of footage on the kid, and that's what I worry about. Um, and to your point about Harbaugh being unpredictable, Marvin Harrison Jr. could be sitting there at uh, number five, and I could see maybe the maybe the Cardinals just say, "Hey, look, we want Malik Neighbors. That's the name I keep hearing that might go one yeah. with Marvin Harrison Jr." It would be a total Jim Harbaugh thing to be like, "We're taking Brock Bowers. I want the tight end." <laughs> I want a big <laughs> pass catching tight yeah. end, and that's how I'm running it. And that's maybe that's how he does. You know, that's know. an interest. That's an interesting point that I'm glad that you you brought up just now because everyone has spent so much time trying to figure out where all the quarterbacks are going to go. Because obviously, it's a really deep quarterback class, <clears throat> dude. You're right. There's going to be someone in the top five or top six that's going to do something insane like that and completely throw a monkey wrench into everyone's mock drafts and it could very well be like you said 
Washington sitting there at number two going, you know what? J.J. McCarthy, he's our guy at number two. We, you know, like you said, you talk about dumpster fire, terrible organizations who consistently make bad moves. Washington is near the top of that list. So, I mean, if, if they do that and then you've got May sitting at three, if you're Minnesota, you're on the phone immediately, right? I think so. I, I don't panic, we... though, because then you still got your pick of uh, either Daniels or May at three or four. So, I mean, you're not I mean, that's in a the huge, ideal. huge panic. That's the ideal situation is if, if the, the commanders took J.J. McCarthy. Which yeah, let, me, let me take a moment to talk about J.J. McCarthy because I... – I, I, it can't be emphasized enough. The thing that I respect about the kid the most is being being on the team that he's on. They they will tell you like I think it was the Penn State game. Everybody talks about where they didn't throw the ball. They attempted one pass and I think it was a penalty, so it didn't count. The in the entire second half, if your team is so good, you look at Blake Corum and you say, "Hey, do you want to get 200 yards in 30 minutes?" And he's like, "Hell yeah, I want to do that. Put me in." And then you can just do that. Think about the Vikings a couple of years ago, one of those shit, awful, mediocre seasons we had. I think it was 2020 where we went to – When Alexander uh, Madison had 200 yards? <laughs> I was going to go with the game where Dalvin Cook had four rushing touchdowns against the Packers, and we had no business beating them that year. I think that was a year that they actually went to the NFC Championship or wherever. They had no business beating that team. But when you have an ex, you know a hole that you can expose, like, hey, I found the chink in the armor. It's glaringly obvious so we're going to attack this, and then that's the game plan. What I respect about J.J. McCarthy is there could be a span of 12 minutes where he hasn't thrown a pass, and they're like, it's third and seven. You better go convert. And he converts. So it depends on the scenario. If the scenario is, hey, we have prime Adrian Peterson on our team. We're going to feed him the ball, and that's our game plan. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if it's the other side of the coin is Christian Ponder is so terrible, we have no choice but to feed the ball to Adrian Peterson, then you've got a problem. So where do you land with JJ? Is he, hey, the team around him was so good, we didn't really need to ask him to do all of these different things on the field because we were going to win either way. Or is it we, we were hiding him because he was deficient in X, Y, and Z. Therefore, you know, we couldn't rely on him to run a real offense. Project it forward, Smith. What is it? I don't know. If I knew, I would be an NFL scout. <laughs> hey, Jim Harbaugh, he'll tell, he'll tell you to like he did at area. And so I've heard, sure. I've heard that he did amazing things in practice. That it was that it was just essentially we don't need you to do these in the you know, in the game, because that's just not the style of offense we're winning. And also that's the difference between wanting a player to put up fantasy football stats and a professional coach being like, no, we're just going to go win a football game. And the sometimes that means, right? Right. That's a good point. Well, here's the other part. I do worry too. with the increased workload for JJ McCarthy though, especially moving up to the NFL level. I mean, I don't think he's really had, that kind of responsibility, and now that he's going to have that responsibility sometimes, I mean, can he sling it 35 times a game if he has to? Yeah, because it's the NFL. There's 100% going to be a game where you can't run the football, and right. it's going to be it's going to be a shootout, and you need to throw the ball, like you said, 35 times. Like, can you, can you hold up? Can you do that? Or will you fold under pressure? Here, here's where he solidified his spot at number four behind the other three and then ahead of the last two is, you know, we look at like Michael Penix. He's probably got the one of the biggest arms and he's got a very cool like outside the numbers highlight oh, yeah. reel, but he's not very athletic, which is kind of weird based on, I know. You, know, the, you know, like his stature and an arm like that. I'm like, man, I figured he would move around. He would thrive in a place like Philadelphia or whomever has like a great offensive line, right? Vikings have an okay line. But the problem is, for, for a Penix, not for McCarthy, and to the aid of McCarthy, is I've watched him scramble, and he's sneaky athletic. And I hate saying that because a lot of people <laughs> use that phrase. But, man, I see him. I see a play breakdown or he recognizes pressure's coming. He's like, oh, shit, I've got to break to the right. Cool. He can do that. I don't necessarily want him throwing across his body or throwing on the run, but that's kind of – 
you kind of have to improvise in today's game. And he at least has that going for him. But like I said earlier, to not throw the ball for 10, 12, 15 minutes and then be asked to go out when you haven't had rhythm and you're not really on a pace or anything like that and say, hey, I need you to throw a dart here and convert so we can close the game. He does that nine times out of ten, and I respect it. But I think the overlying you know, shadow and the cloud over this team is, do you want him at four or do you really want Drake May at three? Assuming well, that happens. Because what if Washington takes him? What's really important in this draft is you really have to trust your scouting department on – okay, so we know that there's like a top three or four class of quarterbacks, and you, you've got them all probably pretty close together on your draft board. How much of a drop-off is there between that first group and that second group? And how willing are you to say, look, if I'm moving up to grab who we think is – the last guy out of the top, the top group, is it worth it? What we're giving up in draft capital, or do you stay put and say we're going to draft the top one or two guys from like that second tier, that Michael Penix tier? Like how much of a how much of a difference do you think there is between McCarthy and Penix? It's kind of wild because the drop off at other positions in this draft is so much bigger. I mean, you can look, and there's the three wide receivers out there that everyone knows are going to be taken early. There's yep. two offensive tackles that are going to be early. There's one tight end that kind of stands alone. And yep. there's, like, maybe three pass rushers that are going to be big. So, I mean, the drop-off after these players is pretty evident. Quarterback, it gets blurry. It's it hard to does. know where that line is. I think the interesting thing – you know, looking at the other teams, Caleb Williams is all but, you know, penciled in as one. So the draft really starts at two in Washington. Washington got rid of Sam Howell. And I think that's one of the guys, If I let's say he was a Viking, I would say build the team you've built so far and see what you have with him because I've watched the kid. He can sling the ball. He can throw the ball 35 times a game. To your question earlier, whoever asked, hey, can J.J. McCarthy do it? I watch Sam Howell do it every week fighting for his freaking life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that team's not necessarily great. So, you know, good for him. He's getting a second chance in Seattle and all these things. But it starts there. What if the commanders take Drake May at two? Are the Vikings okay with taking Jaden Daniels? Those are two different styles of quarterback. I think they're both great. I think their ceilings are high. I think they're athletic. One is a bit of a runner. One is not. That's the one question they have to ask if you're going to go up to three. And like I alluded to earlier, you can go to NBC Sports right now. This article was published six hours ago. Um, Gerard Mayo is the coach of the Patriots. He says, hey, we are absolutely open for business at three. Obviously, we need a quarterback, but we have other needs. And if somebody presents, you know, a bag to us, as he said, of a couple first rounders, yeah, we're going to listen. So are the Vikings okay with getting Daniels if May goes second? Um, What's their backup plan? Are they just in love enough with J.J. McCarthy where they're like, we're calling Arizona and that's it because we don't think anybody else will take him? See, I, I think the that's the best where when you're talking, I mean, if uh, one, two, and three go as expected and Minnesota can't trade up and all three of those top quarterbacks are gone, I don't see the value in trading up anymore. And then Minnesota kind of gets stuck with their picks yep. until like maybe eight or nine when they can find more value in a trade up. So I don't know. Underrated comment. Secret agent, man. I like that. Um yeah, that would suck. That would suck a lot. And we also still have to wonder. I don't think the Broncos are in play because they've given up that to get Russell, and I think it's just finally almost over, even though the cap is going to be the issue this year for them and eating all the money, which they've elected to do. Uh, you still have to worry about maybe Las Vegas coming up. They're certainly getting better, so maybe they think they're a quarterback away from competing. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh the Titans Vikings. are still a wild card to me. I know they like Levis, but I don't know how committed they are. Yeah, that's true. And, hey, that's a, that's one of the things I, I applaud that franchise for. They swung on it a year after they went up for Malik Willis. People were talking about him two years ago, but, like, he's going to go first round. No, he's not. <laughs> People there weren't. No, there was no one. tape on saying that kid was going to go in the first round. And then <laughs> what happens? Will Levis and his mayonnaise coffee slips to the second. They take a flyer on him. They could absolutely take a quarterback again. I don't think they will, but 
it, maybe there's maybe there's the risk of that. This year's draft is so interesting because there are it, it's really deep at the beginning with quarterbacks, and this is also the year that there's a lot of teams looking for quarterbacks. It makes it really kind of a cluster on that top half. Yeah, that top half of the draft, That those, those top five picks on how it's going to shake out because someone is going to overpay for a draft bust. And someone's <laughs> going to end up missing out and playing a quarterback that they had no intention of playing. Yeah. yeah, And it might be Sam Darnold. Who knows? Well, let's talk about this because I, I have it up here. and I just want to go over a little bit of what happened with the offseason because I thought some interesting acquisitions happened within the league. And I think I don't think it completely changes. Is it just my mindset, or is the NFL's t- players switching places, whether it's trades or free agency or whatever? Is it absolutely bonkers this year? Oh, it's insane, Adam. This is the most movement yeah. I can remember seeing in a long time in the free agency, and it's it's been over a prolonged period of time too. We've had like. Oh, the first day of free agency is wild and all these big names move everywhere. And then it immediately dies off until, you know, after the draft. And when you kind of hit that second wave, this has just been a, a, a steady stream of like players going and trades happening. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy and not it. like little players, you know, not like this guy got traded for a seventh round pick. We got players that were Pro Bowl players making $20 million a year getting traded several week, maybe a week after free agency starts. It's like, what the heck? Mike, I think uh, with your comment up here, trade with the commanders, we were talking about that. I think it's possible. I think they're listening. We, I've quoted this twice already in the show today. New England is definitely open to listening. This is reported and out on NBC Sports. Gerard Mayo himself said this, but I think to trade with the commanders, you're going to have to give up a ton. Um I mean, that would be great. That would assure that you get the quarterback that you want in the draft. I do have a question for you, though, Wes. If the Vikings yeah. do trade up with the Commanders to two, who would you take? Who would I take at number two? Yeah. For the Vikings? Yep. Ah, Marvin Harrison Jr. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I want chaos. Put him on the field with Justin Jefferson. Um... Because I actually don't I, know if you have I, a major preference between May and Daniels. I to be to be honest, no, I don't. I'd probably go for Drake May, uh, mostly because I've heard Smith has sold me more on him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be where I would go. So my question would be for you guys: Is the I've been thinking about this too. What style of quarterback do you really think Kevin O'Connell wants? Because I think that he is going to lean more towards the the mobile style quarterback, uh, you know, uh, li- like the Russell Wilson type, like, you know, that you can, you've got a strong arm and you can make all your down the field throws, but I think he's going to want someone with the ability to make plays with his legs as well. But both may and Daniels offer that ability. They both show yeah. up in college. I don't see either right. one being a quarterback. That you could look at and say, he doesn't fit what we want to do. Cause I think both of them could do almost anything they were asked to do. Right. And I bring that up because I think, you know, the only reason that he kept, uh, oh shit, who is the backup's name that we just had? Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins. I think the only reason that Nick Mullins was really brought in was because he fit the style of Kirk Cousins. Like he could run the Kirk Cousins offense without changing it a whole bunch. (laughs) And without having Kirk, it's going to be interesting to see kind of where the offense morphs. And I think you're going to see more maybe designed quarterback runs and rollouts and things like that. I think they want someone confident in themselves. Confidence is key. Confidence means you'll sling it wherever it needs to go. Accuracy has always got to be the top priority. I think for right. any coach, you have to have a guy that's not throwing the ball to the other team. Um, these two guys offer athleticism. Obviously, Jaden Daniels is quicker. Um, I feel like he gets he will get beat up a lot quicker and faster in the NFL. He's like a straight up standing up runner and he'll get leveled and be out for a few games running like that. He's got to learn how to slide. Um, Drake may the footwork they said needs a lot of work, but I've seen him have the, the Russell Wilson throws of the Seattle era where it's like, well, Tyler Lockett's open. There's a fucking 60 yard touchdown. 
I've seen him make that play more than once. He's a, he tries to make that play a little more often than he probably should. But I get the, I like the size of him the most. That's the first thing that sells me is, like, okay, we're not drafting Bryce Young, who looks like a middle schooler on the NFL field. He's a 6'4", 225-pound guy. That's the first thing I look at. It's like, you can't and see Gabe the size. And Daniels is a little bit more of a slight frame. Yeah, he's tall, and I don't mind. I, the height is the first thing that sells me on any quarterback as far as physical attributes. And that's not a t- to take a shot at a Drew Brees or a Baker Mayfield. They've obviously had a lot of success, but I worry that's about kind those of the, But those are that's also the exception to that rule. Right. A hundred percent. Because you don't see very many of those guys. And um, you know, like you said, for with Jaden Daniels, he's got a slider frame, but he's also way more athletic. So he can run around. I just worry that his durability might come into play because I think he's right at like two hundred, maybe two oh five on a good day. I don't think it was that much. So I well, hope let's talk about the ripple there. effect of drafting a quarterback too, because you mentioned Nick Mullins, and we still have Darren Hall on the roster. Do the Vikings cut Mullins and keep Hall for potential since they have a veteran in Darnold, or do they try to slide I, Hall onto the practice squad, or what do you think happens here? I don't think Mullins is around. You probably keep him through training camp, and I hate to say it like this, but maybe you hope another team gets quarterback needy because of injury. Could you flip Mullins for like a seventh round pick if some team is desperate? I mean, probably not. But I mean, I, I there hasn't been a lot of talk of what happens to the quarterbacks at the bottom of the depth search at the moment. That's a good question, Adam. And my first knee jerk reaction was, no, get rid of Hall. He's the worst one out of the bunch. But Nick but Mullins is going drag- to be a backup. But you know what, Nick Mullins, you know. Nick Mullins is never going to be any more than Nick Mullins. And Hall did you, flash a little bit in that first game before he got injured. And you did just essentially draft Hall. I think you've got to give him a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt to say we're going to try to continue to shape and mold you. I Mullins, you got Mullins, Mullins putting up those big yard games when he was in there, even though he had some turnovers. I mean, yeah, they're two well, very, is, very different players. Well, this is Correct. the thing, though, to to get to what Kyle was saying was, hey, we just got him a year ago. This, I think that's what will happen because of Mullins <clears throat> and his ability to have a 400-yard game. You you know what that guy is. He's going to live and die by the gutsy, ballsy throw, but he's going to want to go compete for a backup spot. I think he's solidified his role in the NFL as a, a solid backup. Sure. So, yeah, I think you guys are right. I think they would hang on to Hall. He's cheap. Darnold would clearly be the go-to guy if somebody got injured, but – I don't know. I think that's a that's a good question. Andrew says, "Do you really think Hall has potential after what we saw?" I mean, I don't think the sample size is big enough to make that judgment. That's the one thing I laugh at at Vikings Twitter is they were like, "Jared Hall looked great, dude." Please put this on my my tombstone. He Matt had one Flynn, drive where he looked really good, then he got hurt, and then he went in for a game and did not look good whatsoever. Put this on my tombstone. Matt Flynn had a game where he threw six <laughs> touchdowns. Put it on there. Put that as my final quote of life. That doesn't mean shit. Give me a whole – and I agree with Jared Goff on this. I don't remember what show he said it on. I think it was Rich Eisen. They asked him straight up, how many years do you think a quarterback should be afforded before you can make a decision on him? He said three. We had him for one season, and he played, what, three quarters the whole year? It's not enough. <laughs> it's it's just not enough yet. And I, I root for anybody in a Vikings uniform. I think he's probably going to be the last guy on the depth chart. But, hey, kudos to you, man. If you prove me wrong, I'll eat pro. The Vikings cut it and try to slide him onto the practice squad? Because I don't think Minnesota is going to keep four quarterbacks on the 50 series. That just don't make sense to me. No. Oh, you're right. I think it's here or moment. I mean, shit, I don't, even know, I don't even know if they keep three on the active roster, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, this whole situation for those guys, they've got to be kind of biting their nails a little bit. You're going, I mean, you have to go with the rookie that you're going to draft, Darnold. Sam Darnold. They're guarantees. Darnold, for sure, those are your two guarantees. And then I, you can put Hall on the practice squad. I don't think there's any team out there. You don't think a team or, will sign him after he's cut? I don't, I, no, one's, no one's coveting, no one's going to covet him. I don't think. I think I think they would for insurance, not because they covet him, like you said. For insurance, possibly. How but does, I don't think he showed anything to be like, we gotta scoop this guy up. Yeah. Now if I I, I don't know. I think you can sneak him out when I don't know how many teams everyone else no web play for actually left Minnesota. <laughs> I 
know he was in Carolina for him. <laughs> yeah, but Joe Webb, okay, to Joe <laughs> Webb's credit, he had that weird sneaky athleticism where you could understand why every offensive coordinator would be like, if I could just unlock this guy's potential. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, do you know you know what we've heard, Adam? You know what we've heard the last – when did Lamar Jackson come into the draft? 2018, I believe? Yeah, that sounds, about, sounds about right. You know how they always say he's a running back playing quarterback? Yeah. yeah. Bullshit. He's won two MVPs. I've seen him throw <laughs> the ball everywhere. You know yeah, who was a quarter- running back playing quarterback? Joe Webb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joe Webb was a running back throwing the ball, 100%. Now, I'll give you this. I'm he not even sure – I'm not even um, sure you would classify him as a running back. Well, he wasn't. And I like Joe well, Webb. He tried <laughs> wide receiver, and he was fucking terrible at that. Oh, Webb is a very likable guy, but He's finding a, a spot on the dude. field for him to contribute regularly, that was a challenge. It's, it's like um, it's like Mac Jones coming in after Tom Brady. When you're the guy that succeeds Brett Favre after Brett Favre dies on the field, you're probably <laughs> not going to fill those shoes. I felt bad for him when I saw that. I was like, oh, no, this isn't going to be good. But he did win that cool Tuesday night game in Philly where they just could not pick up the RPOs. And Cool, the boy. Was I on board for Joe Webb after that one? <laughs> Dude, I went to bat for him when I was oh, in the Oh, my God. Webb. Oh, man. And I got roasted for defending him. I was like, yeah. he's such an athletic guy. They're like, you don't know anything of what you're saying I, right now. You wonder, <sighs> you wonder what goes on in these coaches' heads where Bill Musgrave watched that game and then went, Let's turn him into a pocket passer, guys. <laughs> you know, as much as I did not like Bill Musgrave, I do not like even more Brad Childress, so I'm going to blame everything that happened on Brad Childress. It is fair to blame everything on Brad Childress. Yes. That is that is fair. Let's answer Mike's question. You've had two good questions on here, Mike. Does Sam Darnold start the season yes. as a starter for us? Yes, I 100%. I believe so. Barring an injury, I think this is the way. And I don't care if they take – Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, whomever. I think with his time to sit and repolish himself in San Francisco, he's got more experience. He's shown a couple stretches of two or three games in uh, Carolina where he's like, okay, he looks competent. I think he'll be ahead of the rookie starting the season in September. After that, come, I don't know, Halloween, we'll see where the team's at. We'll see what the state of the team is, how pissed off the fans are. (laughs) Um, Because right now, fun fact, came out today, projected win totals before the draft. I think it was NFL on CBS. The Vikings are at the lowest. They're on the last page at like six and a half. Six and a half, yeah. It's fucking bad. It's I I've been pissed off about this too. How come when Kirk Cousins got Colin Coward saying the Vikings are going to be amazing? Yeah, Yeah. I agree. I agree with Colin. But how come when Kirk was on the team, it was like, oh shit, the Vikings are going to suck. Because Kirk Cousins is their quarterback. Yes. And then yes. he goes to Atlanta. He goes to fucking Atlanta and they're like, oh, Kirk Cousins, oh now, now the Falcons are a Super Bowl contender because they signed Kirk. Can I make an educated comment about this? Because I want to I want to piggyback on that, Kyle. It, it's yeah, you get a competent quarterback. He's better than Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineken yeah. from other. That's fine. But you know what they're not giving enough credit to? The fucking coach they got. The coach they got is really good. That's what's going to win you the game because guess what they didn't do last year? The coach they didn't, didn't hand the ball to Bijan? They didn't <laughs> hand the ball to Bijan, and you drafted him in the first round, and he's a cheat code. What are you doing? I I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it because I'm going to, I'm, I could get roasted for this later, but in the context of what I'm going to say, we none of us have ever played professional football, coached, scouted, GM'd, Worked in the building for a professional football team, right? We we bow down and say, hey, you probably know more than us. We understand, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I'm still by the fact that people like younger basketball players today say Michael Jordan's not the greatest of all time. I hate – don't just even. Because, just because you played the game doesn't mean that makes you smart too. Just because you're a coach doesn't mean you're a good coach. What's the guy's name? Um, shit, I can't think. Jim Tom Sula was with the San Francisco 49ers after Jim Harbaugh. He was fucking terrible. <laughs> Just because you have this role doesn't mean you're good. That's like, and, and I'm alluding this to Atlanta last year. I would kill to have B. John Robinson on this team. He is awesome. His first touchdown, if you don't know what it looks like, go look it up on YouTube. It's amazing how fast he stops on a dime, puts guys on skates, and he sprints to the end zone after he's completely stopped. And they don't hand him the ball. But the Vikings are over here like, 
you know what? I think we'll run with Alexander Madison the whole year. That's a good idea. <laughs> These are the guys that get paid like $4 million a year and they're making stupid choices. Anyways, I'm not saying that I know more than a coach, but sometimes the answer is out there. Sometimes you can bully the team into doing the right thing. Like <laughs> Dalton Risner, you idiot. You did it last year. Look how good it worked. Got me fired up for no reason. <laughs> Just wait until Minnesota doesn't trade and they stay at eleven and draft a guard. I'm, I, dude. I honestly, honestly, I wouldn't be upset if they go after Byron Murphy at eleven, Junior, and then they go after a corner at twenty three. Wait till the Vikings trade eleven twenty three and Justin Jefferson to, to number four to get JJ McCarthy. Hell yeah. <laughs> Since we're gonna, uh, I think that would uh, just about make me question my Vikings faithfulness. Yeah. I love that too. That that scenario you said, Adam, is all over you know Instagram, Twitter, wherever. It's like, who says no? The Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Who says yeah. no? Uh, no, I, I do love, love to rip on Colin Coward every now and then, but an NFL team, their success d- d- does depend so heavily on a quarterback's play that you have to get your quarterback right or at least have a capable quarterback to be able to keep your franchise going, keep your GM in his office, keep your head coach on the field. A good quarterback can do all that. And I love that his recent take on his show is said, hey, look, Caleb Williams will be Caleb Williams. We'll see if the Bears get it right. We'll see if all the help they've acquired. They've done some damn good additions this offseason. I cannot believe the Chargers let Keenan Allen go after probably his best year. And he land, of course he lands in the NFC North. Why of course, that could be the that could be the Adam Thielen scenario where it's like, hey, we know you probably have a good season or two left in you, but you don't have five of those well, the Bears left. can afford to eat twenty million too. So yeah. Mean- Right. Not a big deal for them. Well, that's true. And I, the reason I bring him up specifically is they have DJ Moore as well. DJ Moore is a bona fide one. I yeah. think he's a one. Now, he might not be in the top 15 of receivers in the league, but he's a, he's a number one on 32 teams somewhere. So of when course. you have two, a 1A, 1B, like we used to have with Diggs and Thielen or Jefferson and Thielen, it's like, shit, might have some good stuff. But my point was what Colin Cowherd said, wherever – Whatever quarterback goes to Minnesota will have the best job because what we don't want, and what's been said on all these podcasts the last two or three weeks, is you don't want this to be the 2021 draft all over again, where Trevor Lawrence is the only one who looks like manageable, and the rest are Zach Wilson and Trey Lance and all these duds. You don't want to end up with one of those, which I always say that's what the math says you're going to end up with. I certainly hope not. <laughs> Andrew says, I think Quest had a decision tree about 10 picks deep figured out already. I'm I think more so too. Staying with our picks than bundling them and reach for a quarterback. If the value is not there, you don't do it. Well, and that the is about that. the way he works. Are the Wilfs okay with another year of bridge? Because this will go into this full season. If you stay with Sam Darnold the whole time, you don't go after a quarterback, which is a quarterback heavy draft. You don't. You say, hey, look, we're going to ride the wave with Sam Darnold this year. Are the Wolves okay with that? I doesn't, doesn't matter if the fans so, are good with it. My stupid opinion, and we can see how wrong I am as the year goes on, but I think on this offense with this staff, there's not that good. There's not going to be that much of a drop off from Kirk Cousins to Sam Darnold. I, I disagree with you there. But I, 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 see I don't, how, why I you don't might think so. That. I think well, that, that Kirk, we have to assume that Sam is is going to play his best football yet, which is what Kevin O'Connell. I mean, of course, he's going to say that. We ha- I have to see the best Sam Darnold I've ever seen. Now, I think this is the best weapons he's ever had, not in a 49er uniform. But I think we're undervaluing Kirk with that and how accurate he was because we saw how dog shit it was after he left last year. It was fucking sure. bad every game, and I'm like, oh no. This is my worst nightmare. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I remember this feeling. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, what's up, Scott? I had to comment up here. I didn't say hey yet. Glad you're here. Andrew says he's okay with doing the bridge to have a better team for 2025. I agree because I don't know who's coming off of 
a rookie deal that might not get paid or who, who's going to go on their second stint somewhere. They're going to have a ton of draft capital. I'm sorry, uh, uh, salary cap next year. And they could go after a free agent quarterback. I just don't know if it's one of those like, you know, generational guys. You're probably looking at like a Baker Mayfield as the type, even though he's probably going to be in Tampa Bay. You're going to look at someone like Baker ish, like right in the middle. You could probably just do it cheaper with a rookie with more upside is the air quote. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, if that's what it was, if we knew right now, they say, Hey, we're going to do, we're going to get roll with Sam Darnold. We're going to build the team. If they said that right now, I'd be like, fuck it. All right. That's what it is. We know what's going to happen. It's going to make me mad because we're going to be in games, but not win a lot of games. But if they're building the roster, sure. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. Whose quarterback is out of Oregon? Bo Nix. Now, the cool thing about Bo Nix is he's played a ton of football. He was an Auburn Tiger, I believe. Tiger is their name. He, he played at Auburn before he transferred to Oregon. He's played like four full years of college, maybe five. He is NFL, like, I don't want to say ready, but the man's got enough experience. And I, I see a lot of Drew Brees in him when I see him play because he's not huge and have the biggest arm. But, man, I think he could do whatever. And I keep seeing him mocked to uh, Denver. He seems like a Sean Payton player through and through. And I think that would make a lot of sense for them. Unless they're riding with whatever bridge quarterback they have that I forgot. But I'm talking a lot. You guys go ahead. I'll put these comments up. Oh, I'm just scrolling Twitter here and watching people talk about Shaq Griffin's contract. Uh, he nice. signed with Minnesota and uh, $4.55 million, $2.4 million signing bonus. And I guess the speculation right now is that unless the Vikings have another free agent that signs for four million or so, that that second, third round compensatory pick might not happen. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But okay. with Minnesota the way they are, and with uh, Dalton Reisner still not signed, if he doesn't come back to Minnesota, he will definitely trigger that and probably bring that back. So I'm not too worried about that. Minnesota should probably either get Reisner back or. Reisner signing somewhere else should trigger that third round pick. I kind of feel like the Vikings are hoping for that third round pick. <laughs> I don't think Minnesota gets enough credit for what they did for trading Ezra Cleveland and getting a draft pick for a player that was going to leave in free agency. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, that was great. That was a great and like, like you said, Adam, I like Ezra Cleveland, but I don't like him at the contract that I... Uh, he signed with Jacksonville. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. I'm trying to look and see. So, yeah, that's what I was going to see with all the picks and stuff. Uh, Minnesota does still have needs. I don't care for uh, the kicker they got at the moment because he has no NFL regular season experience. I don't even – I can't remember who is the kicker. Romo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the X, he's an all, all XFL team last year, so I mean, he must have done pretty well. Potential, you're probably going immediately when the draft is over into the undrafted pool and get, grabbing yourself a, a kicker out of those guys, bringing them but into at least the question training is, camp, did last right? year's kicker do partly enough where you just kind of wanted to reset? Was it that bad? Because you know, he, Greg Joseph didn't miss from within 40. The longer kicks, he struggled a bit more. I think he was, what, 7 for 13? Yeah. From 40 or beyond. But still, I mean, I think it's a little harsh to do a complete kick reset right at that point. I wanted to get your comments. Uh, welcome back, Fire Breather. We're uh, glad to have you back. Uh, trusting in Kevin O'Connell, uh, Drake May, or J.J. McCarthy. We were talking about the value. I don't see the value of McCarthy at 4. Um, if he somehow fell to like eight or nine, you could jump up a few spots. That'd be awesome. If he fell to 11, that would be a miracle. Uh, I'd feel a lot better there. I don't think that's going to happen, but you're right. Uh, got the absolute best out of Kirk. I think Kirk had his best season and a half, uh, with Kevin O'Connell. The trust was there. He brings up the eight, uh, fourth quarter comebacks. That was a fun year. Seems like forever ago that, that injury really <clears throat> added some years onto my Viking fandom life. <laughs> um, Andrew says, with our cap next year, I think we should give uh, Reisner a backloaded contract with $8 million a year. I mean, I agree. I, I don't understand what they're doing right now, and I'm not sure how much they have in cap space at the moment. I'm not, I know you got to keep some over for the draft picks, but 
Uh, I like the, the addition that he he brought last year. I think there's some solidity. And I think with the weakness of the inside of the line, he certainly strengthened it a little bit more. Uh, I agree. I think we all So all we're going to talk a little bit about these contracts yeah. that are coming up because uh, I don't love some of this stuff. Uh, the Sam Darnold signing, it, it's cheaper this year for Minnesota with the cap hit because they added Boyd years. And I hate Boyd years. Adam I got Boyd a little bit of an so argument much. on X vote with a guy that was like, well, it was the salary cap steadily increasing. Pushing the cap, you know, paying them then actually probably gives it a better value. And in my mind, I'm like, so what you're saying is spend your money now because with inflation, your money's going to be worth less later. It's a good way to look at it. I think we're all different on how we how we do our opinion of value. What is this person's value? I agree with you. I think the void years you want to avoid at all costs because we've seen what that does to the team. To me, that should be like a something you, you do for a big extension. I can see void years like on uh, with Kirk Cousins, it made sense. With yeah. Daniel Hunter, it made sense. With Marcus Davenport, it didn't make sense. Correct. Yeah, I can definitely agree there. I. It depends on the value. It also depends on the length of what is this person going to get. It's, this is the intricacy of the NFL that's really fascinating to me. I don't know that I would ever be good at it. But God, the business side of it all is wild. When it's fun to watch games and just be like, yeah, touchdown, woo. But once you start picking it apart, it's complicated. 100%. Uh, I went on to USA Today. This was published five days ago, so maybe a couple of these have changed. But let me give you a list of some free agents that are still available. Uh, we are 31 days away from the draft. Broncos safety Justin Simmons. Not sure if he went somewhere. Uh, cornerback Stefan Gilmore from the Cowboys because the Vikings do need some corner help. Um, here's two intriguing corners that they are a little past their prime, but if they were brought in by Brian Flores to the Vikings right now, I would be very happy. Patrick uh, Xavier <laughs> Howard from the Dolphins and Tredavious White from the Bills. Uh, those were some of the best in the game, uh, especially a couple of years ago. Adore Jackson, the cornerback from the Giants. Um, cornerback Steven Nelson from the Texans. We've already done enough business with the Texans. Why not add another corner? Um, and then Christian Fulton. I actually wanted the Vikings to draft him uh, a couple of years ago. He Mad man. With the Tennessee, he's with the Tennessee Titans. A um, couple of big names still out there. Odell Beckham, Micah Hyde, Tyler Boyd. Uh, here's an Don't interesting want one. No part of Odell Beckham. <laughs> I heard it was that Odell got offered by contract by Miami. Remember it was Miami, yeah. Yeah, uh, Mike. I forget his name. The uh, coach, uh, the Dolphins, said that they actually offered him a contract. I haven't heard anything on it, but be a flashy little signing down there. He fits in with that city. Um, here's an interesting ball. one. Number 17, Dolphins interior lineman Connor Williams. He did tear his ACL last December, so he won't be a full go for the beginning of the year. But when healthy, he's a starting caliber interior lineman who can play guard or center. There you go. Some free agents that are still out there that the Vikings that, could. That would have been a priority Rick Spielman signing. Give me a guy <laughs> coming off an ACL injury. Give him a fully guaranteed contract. Yes. And over at the Vikings page, I recently put an article about 14 former Minnesota Vikings players who are still available in free agency that you could go get. Dalvin Cook. He's on the list. Let's go. There are a lot of running backs on the list. Dalvin Cook, Adrian Peterson, Latavius Murray, uh, Jerick McKinnon, Cordero Patterson, question mark? Oh, my God. Bring him in now. Bring him in now. I miss that guy. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't asked Reisner to come back yet, but whenever it arrives in all Facebook comments, everyone mentions him's a top prospect. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where we're at. Was he the he's savior? Got man. <laughs> was he the savior last year? Probably not, but he was good. And I'm we've said it on the show before. We are glad that social media bullied the Vikings into signing him <laughs> because it, was, it actually turned out to be a positive. So he and Sam are a good good fit for this organization too. It just seems right. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fun guy to root for. And then, you know, like you said, the uh, the interviews and stuff, 
he says all the right stuff. He just seems like a nice dude. I, I would love to see him come back. Was Griffin the only signing that we had since the last show? Yes. Um, the only signing of the Vikings, uh, Shaquille Griffin. He was famously with Seattle with his brother. Uh, if you remember, his brother was missing, I think, a hand. They both yeah, played together. Right? Really Shaquem. cool. Right. Uh, Shaquille played, I think, for the Texans and the Panthers after that. Right. So, can't remember the other teams, but um, solid veteran corner signing, helping corner, so I like that. Uh, At the moment, he should be penciled in the starter opposite uh, Byron Murphy, which gives uh, Caleb Evans, who started last year, a little bit more depth in the Vikings cornerback room to go with. Uh, the rest of the unit is very young, very inexperienced, and they need time to grow and develop. So having a couple of veterans out there to start should be beneficial. Love it. And uh, before we talk about the main news that came out today, I want to just go over this because I had it up for a minute. Let's go over the draft one more time. We'll talk about some because I, there's been some signings that have certainly shaped – I wouldn't say in favor of, but certainly leaning towards Minnesota, possibly getting what they want here. Um, pick number one, Chicago, Caleb Williams, quarterback. They got rid of Justin Fields. They're going to pick him at number one. That's not really uh, a debate anywhere else. That's what the consensus is. The draft really starts with uh, Washington at two. Will they take Drake May or Jaden Daniels? They got rid of Sam Howell, so they need a quarterback as well. Uh, number three, New England absolutely needs a quarterback. They've only signed uh, – they have Bailey Zappi and Jacoby Brissett, which is not – Yeah, they also moved on from their quarterback from last year. I mean, these yeah. teams at the top are really just getting ready to start over kind of new. Yep, they shipped Mac Jones down to Jacksonville, Florida, where he's from, uh, sort of that area somewhere, and uh, he'll back up Trevor Lawrence, which is wild because they were only like 14 picks apart in the same draft class by how the – Tables turn there, but uh, New England, like I said earlier, they're open to trades. Their roster is depleted. Um, they don't have stars anywhere offensively. So yeah, KJ Osborne. KJ <laughs> Osborne, best of luck to you, brother. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Arizona has their quarterback. They've paid Kyler Murray. Um, and same with the Chargers at five. I expect both of these teams to look at pass catchers, although they will have their choice of um, – tackles as well there's there's some pretty good uh, offensive linemen and that's usually about where they start going five six wherever the giants are a wild card daniel jones sucks but he's still on the roster and this they can't get out of that contract until next year and outside of him what's his name tommy devito yeah i i, I mean if you want to risk your job and start him again sure i guess tommy devito's <laughs> fun it's a fun story I hate it. I hate his. I, ha I hate his agent very much, and he looks like a doofus. And I don't want to <laughs> see him on the TV ever again. Uh, number seven, Tennessee. I don't think they're as much of a wild card. They're building. I guess they're going to roll with Will Levis. From what I've heard, they signed Calvin Ridley to get some receiver help. D Hop is still there, I believe. Um, obviously, Atlanta at eight. They got Kirk Cousins, so they're not going to be in the market for a quarterback, unless. No, they're not going to. <laughs> Number nine and ten is the, the, the most interesting spots because it's right in front of where Minnesota is, but these guys have added a lot of talent, right? We talked about Chicago. They have their pick. This was their original pick in the draft from last year. They're going to get Caleb Williams. They've signed um, – I forget the running back they signed. Is it Swift? Yeah, DeAndre Swift. They signed DeAndre Swift. He's a good signing at running back. They signed Keenan Allen. So they have Cole Komet, decent tight end. DJ Moore, great receiver. Keenan Allen, great receiver. Uh, DeAndre Swift, decent running back. But they lost they Moody. Uh, yeah. Everybody thought he was better than Adam Thielen back in the day. <laughs> Wasn't that great? That was are, they on, to... are they on the same team now? Oh, my God. Did he go to the Panthers? I think so. <laughs> you know, if you were ever going to build a could this team get beat by a college team, <laughs> NFL team, <laughs> the Carolina Panthers sure are building that team right now. Good God. <laughs> um, and then right in front of the Vikings at 10 is the Jets. And I, I bring all these this, uh, these teams up to basically center it around the Jets. I don't know what these teams are going to do. I don't think that they would pull a Green Bay and draft a quarterback. They signed Tyron Smith from the Cowboys. So they have bolstered their offensive line. They've signed two great offensive linemen in the offseason. Now, for some they, reason, one of the top quarterbacks starts falling to 10. I would not blame the Jets for grabbing one. 
they they probably should consider it. Uh, I don't think they want to piss off Aaron Rodgers like the Packers did, but they he's got to also understand like, bro, you're 40 years old with a torn Achilles. Like, we got to plan for the future. But they might have their fair share of tackle and or receiver here or tight end if Bowers falls that far. I think he'd be fun to watch catch passes from Aaron Rodgers. All of these teams outside of the Giants. You trying to take Tyler Conklin's job away? I know. he's He was having fun with the Jets last year. I saw a couple <laughs> of highlights of him making plays. Poor, poor guy. I'm going to catch passes from Zach Wilson all year. But I'm, I'm, I say this to bring those up because all these teams have made some moves. Um, and there's some of the teams that haven't, like the Chargers and the Giants, they are desperate for – like the Chargers and Giants, Chargers lost both of their starting wide receivers. They need a receiver. Uh, they need a tight end, too. Well, Chargers the fans, need... but they didn't have receivers anyway. It's all their fault. <laughs> That's a good point. They, uh, the Giants don't have any weapons. They lost Saquon. They don't have any, like I said earlier, no wide receiver of merit that I can name. I can't even think of who's on the team. But they got Florida. Darren Wallaby. Wallaby. <laughs> so it, it could shape up. Um I, I'm, I'm with you, Adam. I don't think JJ McCarthy will follow 11. If he did, that would I'd be much happier with that. Um, I still think, and before we get to the rule change that happened today, I still think they should and are interested in going after Drake May. The Josh McCown signing, him coaching him in Charlotte at uh, Myers Park, knowing that connection there, I just I feel like that's a sign, and I'm just talking myself into it because I want it to happen, but. We'll see. I hope they trade with New England for the third pick. And I think that we would all agree. I think it's probably going to take both of the first rounds they have this year and probably a one next year. And that sucks because it's a lot of draft capital. But I think New England would take that deal. Minnesota already spent their their second from next year. And this year I don't think they even have a two or a three. So I don't think they have a day two pick. I'm here to sow discord and happiness, explaining truths. Want to hear number of starting quarterbacks since 2004. Let's count them. I can name a bunch. Uh, we'll go backwards. Uh, Kirk Cousins, uh, Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall, Josh Dobbs. Josh Freeman started a game. Teddy Bridgewater, Case Keenum. Uh, who else were we missing? Matt Castle, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, what's his name that I hated? That was Kirk's backup for a couple of years. Sean Mannion. Uh, Gus Farratt, that's 11. <laughs> Christian Ponder. Christian Ponder, Tavares Jackson, Donovan McNabb. Joe Webb. Jesus Christ, Joe Webb, that's 15. <laughs> Holy shit. Is it, Tommy, is it more than 20? <laughs> Holy shit, that's so many. You know, going back to 2004, I mean. Holy fuck, man. Was Brad Johnson in there at some point during that spell? Sean Salisbury, maybe? Sam Bradford. Oh, how could we forget Bradford? That was my guy. <laughs> John David Booty. John David Booty. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to say. I'm going to say 18. Yeah. Tommy, to- 18. My final answer. If you so have the, list. the rule change was that you wanted to talk about because we had two rules passed by the owners committee. I I'm I'm done worrying about special teams and we're gonna we'll talk about it of course but I don't. Oh my god! I did right. miss Farf. Damn. Shame on me. <laughs> um. Yeah, the hip drop, the hip drop tackle thing today. Oh. Okay, because the, the passing the kickoff one is pretty interesting because now that means uh, Kenny Wangmu probably has a better chance of staying on the roster. Yeah, because now there actually looks like there might be some kick returns happening. Uh, for those of you that don't know, and if you watched the XFL last year, the NFL is adopting the XFL kickoff rules from last year, and it could be very interesting to watch. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the now I'm depressed. <laughs> How many you you posed the question? Do you not have the answer, Tommy? Shame on you if you don't have the answer ready. I didn't go through that list to bring up my trauma of this team. Damn you! <laughs> well, now I'm going to see if I can find it. <laughs> oh, dude, please look it up. Um, I'll get back to your question in a second. I want to read this one that's on here, Adam. Uh, is Rogers going to come back? Yeah, he's coming back for sure. It'll be interesting to see who has a better season, Rogers or Cousins. I will go. Well, cousin. That's what you mean by coming back? Like, if he's is he coming back to Green Bay? No. He's going to come back, back to play football North? No. for for the Jets, but I don't think he'll have a better season. And here's why: Kirk. Okay, the Jets' running back and Atlanta's running back pretty even. They're they're pretty set there. 
They both have a good number one, Garrett Wilson and Drake London. Um, tight end, I would lean to Atlanta slightly, even though Kyle Pitts is unproven. Um, I'm sure one of those two teams will get a pass catcher. I'm not sure if it'll be tight end for the Jets or a wide receiver. I think oh, God. Atlanta could go wide receiver. I'll tell cool. you what, I think Cousins will have the better season. He's in an easier division. Uh, Miami is a, pr- a playoff team, and that is the Bills' division to lose at this point. And I don't, I'm don't. i not hinging it on, like, wins and losses, but having to play those teams, you know, twice a year certainly sucks a lot less than when you're playing the shitty Panthers and the very questionable New Orleans Saints. The only people you got to compete with are the Bucks. So I'd say Kirk by an edge there. And he's younger. He's a little bit younger than Rodgers, so maybe he'll heal a little bit better. I'm not sure. Haha, <laughs> Tommy did not have an answer for you. Well, I have the answer in front of me right now. Uh, are you are you prepared? Are you guys mentally prepared? Twenty. I'll say twenty. <laughs> uh, let's just go through. You count. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give you a list. Okay. From two thousand from two thousand four to two thousand twenty three. This oh, is God. every starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Dante Culpepper, Brad Johnson, Tavares Jackson. Kelly Holcomb, Brooks Bollinger, Gus Ferrat, Brett Favre, Joe Webb, Christian Ponder, Donovan McNabb, Matt Castle, Josh Freeman, Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Bradford, Sean Hill, Case Keenum, Kirk Cousins, Sean Mannion, Josh Dobbs, Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall. Is that 21 I counted? Jesus, dude. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Sean Hill, too. That's Brooks the only Bollinger. Sean. Guys, Brooks Bollinger. Who even remembers that? <laughs> I forgot about Kelly Holcomb. I haven't thought about that name since I was young. Talk about repressed memories. You know, that brings me back to the age when I first watched football and Kerry Collins was tearing it up for the Carolina Panthers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a reference for the show. We can end the show there talking about Kerry Collins. God, look at this stretch. Rich Gannon, Wade Wilson, Sean Salisbury, Jim McMahon. Jim McMahon in 1993. (laughs) Warren Moon, Brad Johnson, Randall Cunningham, Jeff George, Dante Culpepper. Oh, 90s Vikings quarterbacks. (laughs) You know what's crazy, too, about this team? This is just my opportunity to shit on the Bears. We've had our quarterback carousel here. It's been a lot. We've had so many better quarterbacks than the Bears have ever had. <laughs> they're, so, they're so fucking bad. And I love that during Kirk's tenure here, the Bears fans would be like, oh, he sucks. He's 500, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you realize if he was on your team and he had these stats, he would be the greatest passer your franchise has ever seen. That's wild. It's true. I was there orbit or opening day 2016 Tennessee. I remember watching this game. Uh, Eric Kendricks had a pick six. That's how. That was good. That was the year we started five and zero oh and ended up eight and eight. That's fucking depressing. <laughs> it was so bad. So you know bad. what? What's really sad about looking at this list is that for the majority of the Vikings franchise, I mean, you got to go clear back to. Fran Tarkenton playing all 14 games or Tommy Kramer, all 16 games, the majority of the years for the Vikings, they're, Hey, here's 12 years of Rich Gannon and, or 12 games of Rich Gannon and four of Sean Salisbury. They very rarely have one quarterback that started the entire season. That's why I laugh at the Kirk stuff, man, because he's, you know, Say what you want. I, I love the clip that came out. I want to be uh, in Washington and retire here. I want to retire in Minnesota. I want to retire in Atlanta. You just want the money, bro. It's fine. That's, that's all it is. I understand you want the money. But I'll be damned if he wasn't available. Outside of I one mean, game where he had COVID and then he tore his Achilles the last year. I mean, how many games I, did he start? I was going to say, Kirk uh, started all of 2018, all of 2020, and all of 2022 for the Minnesota Vikings. 2019, Sean Mannion had the one start, and 2021, Sean Mannion also had the start. And then last year, Kirk started eight games. Yeah, other than the Achilles, he missed the one game because of COVID, right? Yeah. Scott Schwab uh, says, I really hope Justin Jefferson's years aren't wasted like most of Peterson. And they, they will be. 
It will be. <laughs> and I hate it for him. I, I do. And I think he'll have this first contract with us. I think he will definitely leave and go ring chase and money chase after. But unless they nail the next insert top five quarterback that you choose, not named Patrick Mahomes, obviously we would love them to draft the next Patrick Mahomes. Unless we nail it with the quarterback, Probably sucks. Yeah, so I know you wanted to touch on the hip drop tackle, but I don't think there's too much I had to say about it. It's dumb. Everybody hates it. That's a player. Um, I said on Twitter today, and I stand by this, and I, I just want to re-emphasize that. I want everybody that's watching visually on YouTube to look in my eyes. The NFL, I hope you fucking fail. And I'm being dramatic here, <laughs> but I mean every word that I say. You don't deserve to make the billions that you make when you fuck up the integrity of the game like this. Um, this is this whole rule change is the thing that makes me the most mad. Even even though I'm mad about the integrity of the game being changed, it's it's about greed and money. All it is is about pumping up the offense and making the view go up. And you're you are structurally fucking up the defensive part of the game by this. It's just like that sack rule of well, you can't drive your body into it. That's not how fucking physics works, dude. That's not how it works at all. And I understand, well, we don't want a guy's knee to blah, blah, blah. That's football. And you know what's going to happen with this? Because people can't jump up and latch on and pull, you're going to see more ACLs getting shredded. And I don't want that. I'm not saying that I hope that happens at all. But what I hope happens is people get so pissed at these egregious, stupid flags that they stop watching and it hits the NFL in their pockets. Because – that's the only way they're going to revert back to possibly undoing some of this stupidity. I don't believe for one second this is about player safety. This is about pumping up the offense and getting money through viewership. That's all it is. You're pumping this up for greed, and you're ruining a game by doing this. And call me a boomer. I don't. It's care. about keeping your star players healthy so and keep your revenue coming in. That's what I see. Yeah, I you're right. I, I can't. I can't get down with that. I don't. That's what they'll mask it as. I don't believe that at all. You just want to keep people on the field that pump it up, but that, that doesn't benefit the defense in any way, shape, or form. How the hell are you supposed to do that? Like, what's I the don't point? think there's been a rule that benefited the defense in a long time. I know, but that's the point. We keep It's like that game you'll play at Dave & Buster's or wherever where the coins are laying and you drop a coin in, and you just <laughs> keep pushing until it tips over. At what point are we going to stop doing this? You know, like – you wanted to make the helmet safer and stop doing, you know, the concussion thing and CTE was a big thing. Okay, cool. Well, we can't do this. We can't drive on the quarterbacks now. I'm not saying that back in the day when early Brett Favre was going on, when he was getting murdered on the field is okay. But, like, how many times have we seen, like, a light shove from somebody, and that's 15 yards? It's bullshit, man. It's the same way with this. Like, these guys are flying all over the field. If I'm a linebacker or if I'm a safety – I'm just looking at this and laughing, be like, what the fuck do you want me to do? You want me to ask their permission for me to tackle them before I run up to them? The same thing that's going to happen with this rule is what always happens with a new rule. The first four or five weeks are going to be insane. They're going to overcall it. There's going to be drama all over Twitter. The NFL secretly loves it because it keeps them in the news cycle. And then they're going to tell the referees, okay, stop calling it as much. And then it's going to ease up a little bit because that's always what happens with these ridiculous rule changes that they do. They'll do it in the preseason too. Like I saw that the last two years, they have they have the emphasis, like you said. Who knows what will happen? I don't know if this goes to a more like make fun of me all you want. I never played football. If this goes to more like a barrel roll style tackle that'll have to be made, I don't know if that's how you. Because when you say hip drop, I think of a guy running up, you know, from behind or beside someone, and then basically doing that motion where your legs slide and you go into like a baseball slide, sort of. Maybe not in the front of you, but to the side. So maybe maybe people will just barrel roll tackle people now. I don't understand. I just say it's weird, and it's too like Tommy's point here. Uh, it's basically tackling as defined in peewee leagues. So all these guys that have been playing forever now. It's like, well, you just got to adjust. Yeah, but for what? So you can have the offense score more points? Like, I don't know. We just saw in the Super Bowl, like, it wasn't offensively driven at all until, like, the last play of the game. Defense is still a very big part of the game. So, like, I would like to keep that. 
I would like it to be fair, I guess is what I should should say. I would like it to be fair. But you can see the bias is leaning heavy towards, well, we need to take care of offense. I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. J.J. Watt said, why don't you just have the belts with the flags on them? Just bring them out. Yeah. That's going to be a sad day if it ever comes down to that. I don't know that it will. But it's getting it's, – it's slowly inching that way. We're not going back to – keeping it more physical. We're getting less that way. And it's, I don't like that trend. And I do believe I stand by my words. Maybe this won't be like a, you know, like all the old boomer whites that were like, I can't stand Kaepernick. I'm not going to watch if he's kneeling during the anthem. It's not that stupid shit where people aren't going to tune in, but maybe to a degree, they'll just be like, Hey, this is flag football. Now this sucks. I don't know. If they start losing money on this in any way, they there will be changes. That's yeah, that's the, that's the biggest part. That's the uh, that will be the tipping point for the NFL. Is that and that's will, what I'm rooting they, for when I say will, I want them to fail. There will eventually become a point where they make a rule change that is so far removed from what the game should be that people will stop tuning in. That has not happened. Ratings keep going up. Revenue keeps going up. We can be pissed all we want about all the rule changes and the kickoff changes and this, that, or the other thing, but more people are watching the game today yeah. than they ever have been. It was what? Wasn't it the most watched Super Bowl ever that we just had? Yeah, I think the variable that – I think you're right that it will keep going up. I'm not, I'm not going to try to say that I think that this will happen. I hope that it does, but I don't think it will. We also – the context that has to be made, I'm not saying that – this is some kind of like skew or flaw in the system. This is just is what it is. There is way more access to it now than there was before. There's more outlets. There's more devices. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an event. now. It's not just a game. It's a whole day. So oh shit, I was just there. It's a whole week. So yeah, I think the numbers will go up because they, they turned it into that, but it just, I can't help but sit here and feel like, man, this is purposely made. So, um, Offense can thrive. Defense, defenses will be less. And, man, if you want to put the tinfoil hat on and say this is a conspiracy to make the offense go up, you have a certain argument I'd have to listen to, even though it's probably not true. Man. The NFL has a magical way of taking routine things and making them into just spectacles. Yep. I don't know how the Super Bowl became as big as it did. And then why does any other sport have such a – Fanfare that comes with it the way the NFL draft does. Yeah. Right. Well, I I love that. I think the thing that's saving the league now, and hopefully they never change it, is the salary cap. You've seen it in baseball for years. The Yankees will just buy all the star players. The NBA, these guys, shit, the bench guys in the NBA make more than I, Tom Brady made in his whole career. <laughs> I still think every fourth or fifth year, no salary cap. But you have to live with, but you have to live with what you did the following season. So, like, you can go all out like one season, and then you were just screwed the next year. That NFL was so teams have to live Big Brother style all year, all season. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle's suggesting the NFL purge, and I'm here for it, dude. Dude, Jerry, Big just, Brother NFL. We Jerry just Jones kill each other for one season. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Jones would spend so much money in an unsalary yes. cap season. It would be yes. amazing. Everybody would be a Dallas Cowboys. Which is hilarious because they spent absolutely nothing this offseason. <laughs> it's so funny. And I got Eric Kendricks. <sighs> that was weird. <laughs> and I love Eric Kendricks, but I think that was dumb of him to not go to say how do you back out of going to San Francisco and then you go to Dallas, like perpetual wild card losers. Oh, God, I mean, good for you. You want to play for Zim again, but and he's yeah. going to have a good role in Dallas. I don't know how much playing time he would have gotten in San Francisco because he's it's pretty true, but he'd be closer to getting a ring there. Super Bowl. He'd be closer to getting a ring in San Francisco, but um, I think uh, Leighton Vander Esch just hung it up after six seasons. He'd been injured a lot. So there's a linebacker spot open there. So maybe, maybe that's his. But that's all I got for this week. Do you got anything else you want to talk about? Nope. 31 days until the NFL draft. Obviously, we'll keep rolling. and. Uh, oh, absolutely. We'll 31 have... more days of speculation about what we're going to do with the quarterback position before we, before we finally draft a defensive tackle, and it's Sam Darnold. 
JJ <laughs> McCarthy, you are a Viking. I can see it now. I'm mentally preparing for this to happen. That way, if for some reason the quarterback that I want is drafted by Minnesota, I can actually be happy. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm 100% believing that JJ McCarthy is a Viking. Well, Google has changed its algorithms, algorithm, so now uh, articles from the Viking Age are starting to show up when you search for them on Google or other search engines. So this is a great time if you can go over to the Viking Age and click on some of my articles. I'd appreciate it so greatly. I got Do some that. good stuff over there, I think, and uh, should have even more coming out soon. Nice. You can hang out with me on social media at MNVikingZombie, wherever social medias are. X, Blue Sky, Instagram, uh, TikTok, at MN Viking Zombie, uh, Twitch, I think I said already, but you know, I'm, I'm everywhere. So if you see a social media channel, I'm probably there. You can find me at Vaguely Square over on Blue Sky. I don't have much going on right now, but I do share some of my photography work and I always enjoy chit chatting about. Vikings football or horror movies or any of that fun stuff. So look me up if you so choose. Oh, we have to ask uh, Mr. Smith about this. And today's a uh, day of streaming and binging. Do you prefer TV shows when they used to come out once a week? You have to wait for each episode a week, or do you like a whole season coming out at once, then having to wait a year for the next season? Let me snort that shit like cocaine. Give me all the episodes <laughs> right now. And what I'll do, if and especially like, here? I mean, I would rather be able to because the thing that sucks now, and this is the caveat, Adam, if you're like me and you follow something you really enjoy on social media, let's say it's a weekly show. Like I never watch, I've never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. I hear great things, oh. not into it, not into it, don't want to watch it, probably never will. You need but, to. I, I mean, I heard you. I have a Game of Thrones it. tattoo. <laughs> I heard it was good. I heard it was really good, but it's a pass for me. You have to, you have to stay off social media for forty-eight hours because people will talk about it. And I, if there's one thing I hate, is a spoiler. Don't spoil the shit for me. I haven't seen it yet. Some of us have other things going on. Granted, I'm in the great point of my life now, where if it's a Sunday night show, I don't have shit going on. I can watch it. But that, like, my latest obsession is Jack Reacher. You watch Reacher on Amazon, fucking phenomenal show, right? I waited two years for season two to come out, but I had the option to watch it at my pace. And my pace is grab a pint of ice cream and binge both of them at the same time. Like, <laughs> I'm like a little fucking feral raccoon. It's like, ah, this is the best day of my life. I don't know. I like it that way. Because right now I, I'm kind of just struggling. I want new episodes of uh, Peacemaker. Oh, nice. I want new episodes of that as soon as possible. <laughs> I think Redbox DVDs are a thing, but the thing is, are DVD players still in use? Because I don't use well, I haven't had you one. My Xbox 100, uses it. You 100% should buy your stuff on physical media, because guess what? You can see part of my shelf behind me. It's always on my shelf. You actually do not own items that you buy digitally, so... Be careful with that. All you're doing is purchasing a license to own them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wait for all the shows to be canceled. We're starting them. <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's living it right. That's the way to do it. I agree, Jonathan. I love Reacher. Um, I haven't dove into season two. I've been watch, re-watching season one at the gym, suffering through cardio because I don't want to do it. So I put that on, and then magically 50 minutes passes. Um, but yeah, that's it. Adam's going to lead us out of the show. Thank you all for uh, you promoted anything you yours there, Smith. Oh, I don't have anything going on. You guys know where to find me. NC Dog Dude on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, I'm on TikTok sometimes. I'll probably watch your video six weeks after you send it. Adam can attest to that. <laughs> or not at all. Or yeah, or sometimes not at all. I that that app is a black hole for me because once I get on it, it's like I blink and an hour has passed. <laughs> And I'm like, oh no, I did the thing I'm not supposed to do. Oh no, I don't have the uh, the notifications turned on on the old TikTok. So I got to the point where I send my TikToks if I think they're really good, I'll send them right to his Facebook Messenger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll definitely check them there. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to thank everyone who joined us in chat. You guys are the best. I look forward to you guys being here every week, and uh, 
We love talking Vikings football with every one of you guys, so I hope we can keep this up through the offseason, into the regular season, and just keep having fun. And how about into the postseason? Can we try that as a Vikings no. organization? No. no. Don't no. be greedy. <laughs> know your boundaries. <laughs> and in the meantime, stay classy, Minnesota. <laughs>